Tennessee Titans. Brian Tannehill's still their guy, but injury history, and who knows? Who knows? Who knows what they're plotting in Tennessee? Who knows whether or not what's going to happen to Ryan Tannehill is what happened to Marcus Mariota when Tannehill came to town and Mariota eventually got benched. They've got Will Levis, the rookie, and Malik Willis competing for the number two spot. Willis has stepped up. I think Willis was persona non grata in the eyes of Coach Mike Vrabel. He's redeemed himself. He's made Vrabel. Vrabel hasn't come out and said it, but Willis has done something to change the way Vrabel views him, and they split time in the preseason opener against the Bears. Uh, And, uh, you know, Chris, there's a chance that Levis is going to be stuck at number three this year if Willis performs the way that he has in camp and in the offseason program. And, uh, you know, that that gives them the luxury of letting Levis develop. Right. But it also creates an issue. What are you going to do with Malik Willis when the time comes to move on from Ryan Tannehill? Does he become the starter and Levis sits behind him? Or do you do you flip Malik Willis to another team after you've developed him into a guy who can play? Hey, I, I don't know. They got a good problem here. You know, Tannehill's good. You know, I think he is one of the more underrated quarterbacks in football. And these two guys here got talent. They do. Malik Willis, yeah, it was raw all over the place last year. He cleaned it up in a lot of ways. He was clean throwing the football. He's different that way. He's got a few more clubs in the bag, Mike, as far as different throws. His motion is not quite as long and crazy. And the ball, every ball is not just a 107-mile-per-hour fastball now. So he's able to change speeds, arm angles. He's got some elite, elite physical talent about him. It's about playing the game. It's about getting his eyes in the right place. It's about reading the field the right way. And he certainly looked like he made improvements in that department, Mike. That was interesting game and how they played him, right? First off, there's two things that I really liked, Mike. One, they're backup quarterbacks, right? So they got them used to being, they rotated them almost the whole game. So you're used to, whoa, I've got to come off the bench now, right? I thought that was kind of a cool thing to do as far as you want to teach a guy how to be a backup. You got to teach him, ooh, he might have to go in at a, at a whim or, you know, in a whim or just at a, at a moment's notice. And you're not always going to be in rhythm from the drive before and all that. So I like that for sure. But it also showed me that there's real competition there, like you said, with those two guys. Like this is, this is real for this backup spot. They both did a good job, but yeah, Willis was impressive as far as his improvements from last year to this year. Did did Willis look smaller to you? Like he's dropped some weight? Yes, he looks did. A little Not as thick in the legs and that definitely. I I noticed that right away. Right, and there's I the, noticed in the torso and in the trunk, he just seems smaller. He hasn't yeah. been rating uh, the Mike Vrabel Mike Vrabel ham stash maybe as much as he was last year, but you get more explosion out. If there's a balance, you need the suit of armor, the natural suit of armor under your pads to stay healthy, but you can get more explosion, a little more acceleration. You can do a little more with the football in your hands than uh, than maybe you did if you were carrying an extra, I don't know, he looks maybe 15, 20 pounds thinner than he was last year. Yeah, there's something there. And you got to find, you know, that, that, Hey, yeah, like you said, the armor, but yet I want to be quick and fast and be able to move in the pocket and hop around and be able to do it for four quarters and be in shape to do it as well. That's the balance you got to find there. So, but either way, I thought both guys did a lot of good things, right? Willis still is raw. Like I watched that game on film a little, Mike. I watched it yesterday. You know, there's still moments where his eyes are like, he looks at one, he looks at three, he looks back at one, and you're like, wait, why did you do that? I don't understand. Just stay with one, and then let's go to two, and then three. Why did we look? But, you know, make some eye-popping throws, eye-popping, you know, escapes. But he fumbled the ball at one time. He threw an interception, right? Will Levis throws an interception at the end of the football game, probably had another one dropped. So these are guys with, like, big arms, big talent, and they just got to learn to be refined, take care of the football, run the offense, and get in the trust tree with Vrabel. And I think that's what they're battling it out for right now there in Tennessee. Levis threw 14 passes, completing nine for 85 yards. He had that interception, like you mentioned. Here's Mike Vrabel from after the game on what Levis needs to improve upon. I mean, I think just letting the game come to him, just take what's there, you know, just trying to make sure that we're, we're not overdoing it, that we're just playing a, one, one role, a large role as a quarterback in the offense and, you know, taking what they give you. And then when there's opportunities to, to work the ball down the field, do that. 
um, did, did some nice things. You know, I thought did some some really nice things, and you know, would like to have some plays back. I remember Vrabel didn't coach that game, um, and uh, you know, he's he's coming up with innovative ideas. Take full advantage of the preseason, like you were saying. Rotate your quarterbacks. <clears throat> Get them to simulate yeah. what it's going to be like right. if you get all of a sudden called upon to go in a game when you haven't been in a game instead of having that rhythm that is likely not going to happen this year unless Ryan Tannehill gets injured or is just horrible. But, yeah, you said it. Good problem to have, although the best problem to have is no problem at all. They draft Will Levis, maybe not recognizing Malik Willis is ready to to turn the corner and be better than he was last year, and now they're going to have to decide who's number two, who's number three. There was a point where... Willis looked like he was on the endangered species yeah, list as right. a member of the Titans roster. But remember, that new third quarterback rule and the way they've crafted it for this year, you got to have three guys on the 53-man roster in order to address that extra player on game day. I think it's safe to assume when the season starts, it's going to be Tannehill, Willis, and Levis as three members of the 53-man roster in Tennessee. Would agree. I mean, if they're not on the roster, somebody's going to steal one of them. I can promise you that. They are. There's just too much talent there. I think that goes back to what you were saying with Vrabel. I'm sure he was in the doghouse. You know, you're right. I mean, hey, he was young. He was a little immature. He was careless with the football. I'm sure all those things. But I, I would think Mike Vrabel recognizes the talent for one and then also recognizes, damn, we shouldn't even have been in the position to where we had to put that kid in last year. That wasn't fair to him. We should have had better options. The team should have been orchestrated better to where we didn't have to rely on the everybody knew raw rookie quarterback. So hopefully he hasn't held that against them. And I think that's what you're seeing. And, the, you know, Levis and, and Willis, they got starting quarterback type talent. Willis's arm is elite. It is. It's just about the decision making, the appropriate throw, and doing that, you know, the right thing with the football. Can they trust them and all that? And that's going to go with Levis, too. Levis can be a little crazy and careless as well. You know, the interception at the end was a little bit like, whoa, what are you doing there? He had the play, the second to last play, Mike, before that, he had a wide open guy over the middle and, you know, just tried to throw it too cool or too hard where you just go, Pop it up and just get the completion. I don't give a damn if that thing helicopters and helicopters and quacks or whatever. Just get the completion here. But he tried to, like, throw a laser in the middle of the field, and it became incomplete. And then he threw the interception next play. But still, I think a lot of positives from both of these. See there, that, that's th those are things he needs to work on. He tried to throw a touch ball, and he just lost total control of the football there, Mike. And I got to give Rabel credit because – this whole Willis thing, I think, was another indication of the friction that existed between Vrabel right. and former GM John right. Robinson, a fight that Vrabel eventually won. Yeah. But Vrabel isn't going to hold it against the kid. Like, even if the kid is associated with the right. former dysfunction and was a guy that maybe Vrabel didn't want and maybe wanted to have a better number two to Ryan Tannehill last year, He's not going to hold it against the kid to That's the point right. where he has no chance whatsoever to redeem himself, to prove himself, and to be a member of the team. He's part of the team. He's under contract. And they're going to give him a chance to do exactly what Vrabel needs him to do. And he's doing it. So uh, that, that it's, it's encouraging to see a coach not let – because those guys get right? caught in the middle of they the do. fights. Gets and he's personal. not letting – right. Right. Whatever acrimony was between him and Robinson, and surely there was some, or Robinson wouldn't have been fired during the season. And all we have to do is go back to the neck thing from the A.J. Brown trade. But <laughs> uh, he's not identifying Malik Willis with John Robinson. He's given Willis his own chance, and, and it's showing. Yeah. That, that opportunity is is uh, turning into something good for Willis. Yeah, good for Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel's a man's man. He's old school. He's not petty. Right. And, and you're explaining it right. I've been in places where, oh, you know, the coach doesn't like a player because it was the other guy's guy or the GM picked him and it wasn't my guy. And they hold it against that player. And you want to go, damn, you know, you're, you're going to, you know, mess up our team and your own damn job just because you didn't pick him, even though he's the better player and we need to give him a chance to. Vrabel ain't going to do that. Rabel's going to play the best guy. He's going to, he's, he, he's not going to cut off his nose to spite his face. 
I think I got that right. And uh, credit to him. Yes. Matt, Vrabel's next level. Vrabel, I just think what he's doing with the head coaching thing, the quarterback there, some of the things and the drills and the stuff I heard about them that I saw on social media that I had people tell me about throughout the spring and all that. Um, he is uh, always looking for a new way or a cutting edge, and uh, it's, it's very impressive. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.